I'm thankful for the uh, organizer to invite me. I was working for a year in Rome in Cenare in Tor Vergata uh, with a group of uh, Guglielmo Fortunato. Uh, which one is the, the last one? Guglielmo is the director of the IMA of the institute there, and uh, they have a 3D machine. 3D printing machine and a 2D printing machine and I work on electroless plating. So it was fun. So we tried to deposit electroless plating to deposit material on everything that we could do. And uh, thanks for the invitation today. I had the opportunity in the last few days to summarize a lot of the work. It hasn't been published yet. So it's, some of it is in, just in ideas or thoughts on Okay, so when you look for keywords, electroless plating and, and uh, printing, uh, if you Google it, immediately you see PC boards. PC boards, they use it, so it's not, I'm not talking about something new. And usually it's applied for substrate pattern by conventional lithography methods. So it's, uh, I think the first patent on electroless plating is like uh, 1907 or 1910, so it's an old technology. I mean, I think even the Romans use it to do plating of silver 2,000 years ago. So it's definitely not a new technology. Uh, usually we use photolithography, e-beam lithography. And the key for electroless plating, which is an autocatalytic process, and I'm going to explain you uh, shortly what exactly do I mean by saying electroless plating, is you need a C layer. You need to catalyze the reaction. You need to start the deposition somehow. The substrates can be wafer, silicon, glass, polymer, polymer composite, ceramics. In my group, uh, I think in the last 20 years, we try to deposit on everything from single molecule to making contacts on proteins, on everything. So we have a lot of experience in doing it. And you, typically the seed is palladium, but uh, practically you can use many other metals. So why mix electroless deposition with printing? First, you know, the Jewish answer is why not? Well, you can do it so. It's fun. But there are other more practical answers. First, you can modify the material properties, strength, reflectivity, conductivity. You can add functionality. We do electroless plating of zinc oxide or zinc oxide nanowires. So you can even save some uh, uh, what we call transparent conductive oxide. Uh, you can integrate with biomaterial. Uh, we have special processes to link metal deposition on proteins and biocompatible electrodes. So we can mix technologies and make some very interesting structures. So, for example, our current, our current projects, we do um, molds for PDMS microfluidics. We've, my students, uh, they make a lot of microfluidics, and every time they make the aluminum mold, it costs me $200. I found out I can go to the 3D printer, generate the mold, coat it with electroless plating, and use it. It costs much cheaper, it's much faster. It's, the quality is a little less, but for experiments, it's the, I think 3D printing for making biochips, it's a great idea. We do metal contacts to printed ammonia sensors. Uh, we make thin film transistors. And we do nickel contacts uh, and electroless plating of gold on silicon nanowires. So this is the last project that we print on polyimide. There are Few companies in Israel already using electroless plating for not PC board. There are PC board companies, and one of them is a, a polymer tal here in Haifa, which uh, we have some uh, collaboration with my lab. Then they do EMI RFI shielding, ESD electro uh, improving uh, the change electrical co conductivity of substrates, and humidity barriers and heat conduction. So they already have they make products using it, and Zev is here, I believe. And if you want to see some of the demos, they, have, they brought some printed substrates. Uh, even when I look at Stratasys, and Einat presented uh, their structures yesterday, once you make the structures, you can do electroplating or electroless plating of metal on top of it. I took it from their catalog, from their website. You can do electroplating, electrophoretic deposition in, in addition. So once you do it, you can uh, make it like embedded structures, embedded metallization, damascene. So take the damascene metallization people use for VLSI and make it on plastics. So it's a very useful technology. The problem is that if you do 3D printing, you print the substrate. You can be a part of a bigger substrate. 
and then you do electronic functionalization. You add the electronic materials, insulators, semiconductors, metals, and this one we do by 2D printing on top of the 3D printer, printed object. And then you need contacts. So we do electroless plating. Uh, mo in, most, in most of the cases, I mean, you can print silver uh, wires by using silver ink. The problem is it's very difficult to bond it, to bond to it, and the conductivity is not the greatest. So we found out that electroless plating is very useful for uh, uh, making packaging for printed structures. And there are few, if you think about it, there are few possible options. You can do the 2D printer, printing, like print the seal layer, and then do the electroless plating, or you can do 2D printing ink that already contains the metal and the catalyst. Now, this lecture is about 3D printing and 2D printing and electroless plating, but if you look at 3D printing, I just went to one of the rev recent review papers, there are many types of 3D printers, and, I, and I not in yesterday uh, presented like uh, stereolithography and photolithography, multi-step structures, the SLS method that here is a short, I, I'm going to review it very quickly. This lecture is not about 3D printing and uh, what uh, Stratasys is using, the FDM method, the fused deposition mo uh, uh, modeling or the, the LOM method, the laminated object structures, I'll run quickly, ballistic particle manufacturing and 3D printing, which was invented in, in MIT. Um, if you want to use uh, electroless plating, there are other types of printing that are involved somehow. Uh, the old screen printed printing that people use for solar cells, or the layer structures where you use ad special adhesive tapes which are loaded with the seal layer and you put them, pattern them, and you can have very quick the position. This technique, just to show it's from 1977. Again, not a new technique. Uh, there are early works. Uh, if now, this was like the old works. In the last 10 years, there's a trend to integrate electroless plating and printing. And if you look like at papers from two, I highlight the year, so the topic is not so important. 2007 and 2009, some recent works on printing the seed. You take the substrate and then you print the seed and then continue with electroless plating. Or you can print the catalyst. Catalyst is a sea layer, typically palladium nanoparticles or palladium colloids in the colloidal form or a palladium complexes that you use to start to the metal deposition. And this was 2005 paper. This is earlier 99 and even uh, microprinting, which is an older, older technique in 1996. Or even printing on wearable devices. There's a recent paper from 2006 that people actually printed uh, on textiles and they use electroless plating for depositing the metal on the wearable devices. Or you can print on membranes. This one we, we also do. We use, uh, this was presented in 2009. We also do. We make PVDF membranes which is a piezoelectric material, and we use the electroless plating to make the contacts. And uh, this special paper, what's called reactive printing, with it print the metal complex and the reducing agent together. So if we summarize 3D printing, we need fast stabilization, shape stability. The 2D printing we use to print on the 3D, it has to be, first we need to, the, the ink has to uh, be properly being deposited. We need the stability of the drop. We need the stable drying process. And we have effect of the topography, the roughness, the porosity, and the functionality also allow some chemical bondings to the structure. Now the electroless plating, uh, we need controlled surface roughness, which affects the sea layer formation. Uh, and growth, affect adhesion, affect the properties and the reliability. Then we have the catalyst layer, uh, which uh, affect the nucleation site size, and uh, we use either um, nano or microparticles. And then we also use uh, what we call surface functionalization, where we deposit other molecules on the surface, for example, amino propyl tetrahydroxycyline and other self assembled monolayers, and they change the surface properties. 
Now, problems. First is surface topography. If you look at a printed 3D structure, it's uneven and it's rough. And because <coughs> it has to be cross-linked, it has to be hardened, it's usually hydrophobic. How to solve it? One way to solve the hydrophobicity, you do surface functionalization, either changing the surface, uh, surface chemistry by uh, some self-assembled monolayers or um, irradiation by ultraviolet or exposing to oxygen to some plasma or insert a buffer layer or using a thick seed. This is uh, what uh, the solution that the company, the Israeli company uh, Polymer, Polymertal is doing. They solve it in a very elegant way. If this is a very rough 3D structure, they put a buffer layer and then it's smooth and then you continue, then there is no problem very elaborate method, very practical method. And this is their company here in Haifa. If somebody wants to visit, they do the whole process. Very interesting technology. Now, what are the problems? Uneven surfaces, roughness. Uh, the problem also, there's a limited selection. What I mean limited selection? When I look for the ideal structure for electrolyte plating or the material they use for 3D printing, it's two different requirements. So there are very limited uh, materials they are used, they are typically brittle, they, what they shrink, they are, uh, this material are not electroless plating friendly. And there is a contradiction between the uh, object preparation requirements and the application requirements. Uh, they are sometimes toxic, there is a cost issue. 2D printing is a more known technology and the electroless plating Sometimes this, the sea layer is expensive because we use materials like palladium, platinum, and gold to start it. Uh, there are some selectivity loss, uh, non-catalytic uh, seeds, and it's a relatively slow process. It's good for thin layers. It's not good for a very thick layers. So if you want the thick layers, you have to find a way to solve, to somehow to use electroplating. It's an elevated temperature, and the pH of the solution can be sometimes very high or low. Other materials problems in 2D, uh, we need a stable fast forming materials with less emphasis on the surface and nanostructures, morphology and texture. I think I'm repeating myself, we have stabilization problems, so let's go. So the last part is the most important one. The requirements may be, or not maybe, the requirements are conflicting. So if you think about electroless plating in the whole arsenal of technologies that we have in the lab, we can do CVD, uh, sorry, we can do PVD, sputtering. Uh, it requires surface treatment. It's usually expensive, and if you want to have a very large sputtering, it's a problem, and there's a step coverage problems. CVD, high deposition temperature, not suitable for most plastics. PCVD is a better solution but it's a difficult if you want large parts. Electroplating is a very ni nice technique, but it requires conducting substrate or a seed. So what's left? Electroless plating, which is uh, the way that uh, it's a process. If, if you're not familiar with this chemistry, this is two slides. You take the metal ions in the solution. They react. If you give them electrons, you produce the metal. So how you produce the electrons? You take another compound we call reducing agent, and this reducing agent, it gives electron, by, there's an oxidation process, we have some byproducts, and it gives electrons. If you mix the reducing agent and the metal together, the reducing agent gives the electron to the metal, and the metal is being deposited. So this is the whole idea of electroless plating. In one minute, it's an autocatalytic process, because we designed the solution to be stable, otherwise we'd have spontaneous deposition. So we make it stable. It's been catalyzed by the metal. So we put a surface which is a metal, we deposit the metal, that catalyzes the reaction, that deposit the metal, etc. Then we start the deposition on this catalytic surface. The catalytic surface induces the position of metal from a specially designed solution. Once the metal is being deposited, it's its own catalyst. And then we continue to deposit until we consume all the metal or we take out the sample from the container. So this is electroless plating. Uh, typical solutions contain metal salts, reducing agents, which are supplying the electrons. 
it's very difficult to make those solutions to, uh, to be stable uh, for long term because they are inherently unstable solutions. And there's a conflicting requirements. You, you want it to be stable, but you want it to deposit, which is inherently in unstable. So we put some buffer and additives, you know, like in any electrolytic processes. The result is typically high quality pure or alloy, extremely selective and extremely conformal. So this is a very useful properties. I will skip this. So what I'm going to show today, we use this uh, uh, Stratasys uh, 3D printer that's called Dimension. I don't have a picture here where we make the substrate. On the substrate, we uh, make patterns that we can insert into the dimatics. Uh, this is the 2D printer made by Fujifilm, or maybe Fu Fujifilm bought this company. I'm not sure who owns. Definitely is the biggest company. Then we do electrolysis plating, copper and nickel alloys. And we measure the uh, resistivity and uh, the impedance using this machine. So silver was printed on the standard dimatic sil uh, silver nanoparticle ink, and we printed on uh, the polymers that were 3D printed. Now, the S is printed lines have no catalytic activity. If you print silver lines and you put them in the electrolyte plating bath, you can wait, nothing happens. It's, you get some uh, deposition here and there, but it's very ugly deposition. It's definitely not a good quality deposition if you have any deposition. So we need to do some surface modification. We tried a lot of methods. Today I'm going to show one of the last uh, experiments which was very useful. We, the, we uh, immersed it in formaldehyde, uh, which is <coughs> It might be a problem to commercialize it because formaldehyde is a no-no in California in many states for electrochemical, for a practical purpose, but we can use glycolic acid, which is, is also possible. Now, formaldehyde is a non-reducing agent. In the pH that we work, it's a material which is known to be part of many solutions which are uh, electrolysis solutions. And what is the effect? The effect, once we do it, we have electrolyte stating, very selective, a very good quality. And we, uh, in our research, in the, what I'm going to show today, we deposit cobalt, uh, co a copper doped with cobalt. And the reason we put a little bit of cobalt to improve the stability, it's, uh, we have like stainless copper. If you mix a little bit of cobalt in copper, it's much more stable. And the resistivity, of course, is less, but it's much more, less sensitive to oxidation. This is the classical electrolysis copper bath, and also nickel phosphorus. So each solution, without going to the chemistry, has the metal salt. The, uh, here comes the tartarate, which is the reducing agent. And this specific solution, we also we can deposit at room temperature, uh, which is uh, very nice for uh, many types of plastics, which are even this temperature of 70 degrees, it's a little bit too high, because they tend to expand and shrink and uh, they have a rather large coefficient of thermal expansion. So this is how it looks. This is the final result. This is the uh, polymers, the, I think it's ABS that we got from a uh, Stratasys machine. There was a silver printed structure and then on top of it, this specific one, this is the copper with a little bit of cobalt inside. It's a very nice coating, very conformal. And this one, we, the application for this specific design, uh, we are going to replace this part with a P dot, and we use, we make some semiconductor resistors for some applications. So uh, what we found out, the printed silver lines, SEs, our resistivity is very high, 1,200 ohms, which is about, if we translate it to the uh, sheet resistance, it's about 60 ohm per square. Once we do the electrolysis plating, and uh, this is for about 10 minutes deposition, we got the uh, resistivity goes down from more than kilo ohm to less than 10 ohms, the sheet resistance in this value, uh, which specific resistivity 10 to 45 micro ohm centimeter, which is not so bad for electrolysis plating under such uh, difficult conditions. 
This is kind of samples. This is what we, samples we got in May. This is samples we got in December. And you can see that they even change the type of polymers they give us sometimes without even telling us. Uh, this is on glass. And in this specific case, it's sealed, uh, we, here it's not printed. This is completely dipped in the silver nanoparticles just to show uh, this, the position. Uh, cobalt came out very nice. This is, a, th this is how the seed looks after printing on the glass. And cobalt uh, has this beautiful color when it's very, very thin. I, ju I just forgot to tell you that in some cases we deposit extremely thin layers, like a few nanometers. Uh, in a larger magnification, you can see here how ugly <coughs> is the nature of the surface. You see, this is definitely, you see the lines that this is the result of the printing. And nevertheless, we got very continuous, very conformal electrolyte plating on top of it. Uh, I apologize for the quality, it's a little bit out of focus, but again, we got very conformal, very good quality deposition. So the model, and I'll skip the words and go directly to what we believe happens, we have this gold silver nanoparticles and they are coated with some residue of the ink. And this residue mas is masking this, the, the, the nanoparticles and there is no activity. When we, the, the, when we dip it in formaldehyde, first the formaldehyde and the solution that we prepared remove this residue. And we also believe that we have a formaldehyde being adsorbed onto the surface. And since this is a very strong reducing agent, it initiates initial deposition of the copper. And the copper is an autocatalytic. The, the copper deposition solution is an autocatalytic uh, solution, uh, process. And then the process continues. So be, we believe this. We haven't done any uh, Auger or other surface analysis techniques. What I'm showing is the, what I'm showing you is results for like in the last month, or from sorry from December. It last month actually. So conclusions: electroless plating uh, is possible. It's a very wide area. Today I showed you just like the tip of the, I wouldn't say iceberg, the tip of the plastic. And uh, the substrates are currently used are very irregular. And we definitely, the, the plating improves the conductivity. We can also bond. When we do electroplating of nickel, we can bond into it. So we can, what we do now, we take sheets of paper, put them in the printer, the print sensors. Then we do electroless plating of the contacts. We cut it with scissors. And then we have sensors for ammonia that we are now using and testing. And, for some and other application. It's very, it's very nice that you can print at your home your sensors. And just need to make good contacts. And the plating also makes the lines a little bit more rigid. So we use, oops, or more, more rigid. So we sometimes use the metallization also for just introducing some mechanical strengths for the printed sensors because the paper is very, uh, no, paper-like, so sometimes we make it to be a little more rigid. And it's uh, very compatible. What happened? I'm pushing the wrong button. It's compatible with many substrates, and basically we can offer a variety of materials. Thank you.